Yeah. Okay. So hi, this is my dad, Hello. and uh, we thought that we'll do like a small video for Father's Day, and we'll answer a couple of the questions that keep coming in uh, about how he allowed me to travel <laughs> to a lot of unsafe places across the world, and what he feels about uh, me traveling the world full time. His name is Jamendra Kumar, and he's an engineer by profession. Could you guess? Uh, but more importantly, he's an amazing, amazing writer and a storyteller, and he specializes in writing children's books. Um, so yes, presenting to you, my dad. Okay, Anki is a traveler. She's a solo backpacker, and uh, she, according to me, is a rebel without a cause. <laughs> okay, so one of the questions that came in was, what was Anki's childhood like? What you were like? I mean, you were exactly op uh, opposite of what you are. Very shy, but there was some kind of silent mischief, which later I come to, I came to know from my son, who was completely, totally, absolutely bullied day in and day out, and the secret came out just a few years back. Yeah, so I will tell you a little bit about how he was when we were growing up. Okay, Curfew time was five thirty. I was not allowed a single uh, sleepover in the seventeen years that I stayed here. And uh, so, a little bit about where uh, I grew up. Uh, so, I was born and brought up in a small town called Raipur, and uh, So, already it's like very protected, right? Like everybody knows everybody else, and the maximum that you have to travel to across the city would be like six minutes. Yeah, it would take you yeah. six minutes. And and one and one traffic one traffic signal, signal in yeah. the entire town. <laughs> and in that, he was this. So, you can only imagine how protected he was. So any incidents that you remember? Yeah, I remember one thing that the first time when she went on an excursion to Hyderabad, so uh, I was following the uh, the train even as it crossed the platform and hearing instructions at her. Beta, mama ka number yaad rakhna, mami ka number yaad rakhna, cha cha aayenge, cha chi aayenge, sare paanch baje aayenge, etc. 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 I remember that. I remember that. It was a really, really like filmy scene of him like running <laughs> DDLJ style yeah. behind the train. In fact, I think DDLJ got it from me. Only that part. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think what happened then? Like what happened from uh, then to what it is like now? Like you, how did that happen? Then you mentioned something like allowed. I didn't allow you. You allowed yourself. That's true. That's yeah. true. And the first time when she went, she went without telling us that she's going Alone, we thought she was with her friends. At least I thought. Just a little bit of like where I went and stuff. This was my first ever solo trip back in 2015, so it was five years ago. Um, and this was in Vietnam for a month. I don't know why I chose Vietnam. I don't know why I chose to go there for a month and by myself. I have no idea how all of those things happened, but they did. And I was so terrified to tell him that because. He was so protective, right? There was no way he would have allowed me, allowed me saying allowed. But then at that point, it was that because I was much younger and uh, had just gotten out of a job that I used to hate. Um, you were rebel with some pauses. With some pauses, with a lot of uh, pregnant pauses. <laughs> <laughs> so at some point, like I did feel at the back of my head that I wanted to be honest with you. Like I didn't really want to lie anymore because at the end of the day, like if you, if I don't have your support. It just doesn't feel and right. And you wanted us to be a part of a this part fun. A part of this fun, a part of my dream. And and she, she had a very solid uh, logic. You know, she said that I love doing this. I'm passionate about it. I enjoy it. And then it was a throwback to my years. You know, because I wanted to do English literature and get into uh, teaching and full time writing and all. I couldn't do it because of the circumstances. So I thought, come on, I can't be a kind of a barrier to her dreams. You know, I should allow her to uh, let her live her dreams. Her passion, her life. So that was one, I wouldn't even say paradigm shift. shift. It was a kind of a universal shift as far as my head and heart were concerned. You know, I agree completely. Like, uh, I remember after those 30, 20, 30 days, you just called me up one day, and at that time I was going to Indonesia and Malaysia alone. And you just called me and you was like, how to plan it? <laughs> and I was just like, okay, I guess we're just not going to talk about it. We're just going to move past everything. And maybe, yeah, I mean, it was always, and I was so happy. Like, I can't, I can't. Begin to like imagine what my life would be like if you weren't okay with it. Like I don't think True. I would have been able to sustain it because you need that support, no? And it always feels so good and it feels so heartwarming to have your and mummies and aunties and Aryans, <laughs> my daughter, the constant support because otherwise it just doesn't feel right. True. True. Yeah. So yeah, I think that that conversation was a very very important thing to have, and I'm so so grateful to have this.
that i am and i'm thrilled and i'm i can't tell you how proud i am that you know that my little princess has now become almost a what should i say a celebrity and all that <laughs> <laughs> moving on <laughs> Um yeah okay so this is a really sweet question what is it like to be the father of a girl who lives in a world that is not safe and her job is to travel uh now i've kind of reconciled or i think i have uh, adjusted to that kind of uh, the feeling or that kind of uh, this thing you know the knowledge uh, because i think uh, anki you told me a couple of things you said that uh, sometimes the the jungles in, of uh, amazon are safer than some of the streets in some of the cities of india second thing you talked about a code or a, a kind of a bonding between the uh, backpackers and all that so you are just help us a phone call away so that gives gave me a sense of uh, security okay she said but even now every time you call my heart beats faster every time you don't call my heart stops So that stress, that tension, is always there. Yeah. Okay, I went on a four-month-long backpacking trip across South America, and uh, the day I came back, uh, you called me and you said, uh, "Today I'll finally sleep after four months." Yeah, it it is true. It's yeah. True. I think you do borderize, you censor some of these experiences, and only when you come back and then you I say that you know actually this what uh, this was happening, yeah. or this happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. cushion is always there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Okay. Do you like travel? And how do you travel? I uh, love traveling, but my uh, idea or the way I travel is completely opposite yours. It has to be specific. Everything is planned to a P and a T and a O and a everything else. The places I'm going to go, where I'm going to reach, what flight I'm going to take. Who's going to receive me? If anybody at all, where I'm going to stay? If it's a homestay, for how long? What is the itinerary? Everything is planned. Possibly even what I'm going to eat. <laughs> yeah, so I'm completely opposite of that. Like I don't know how that has happened. And you don't like traveling alone. I, I hate, hate traveling, traveling alone. alone. <laughs> even if I have to go to the market, I used to take these kids along. You know, for a haircut, I used to take my son. I would plan it this way. You know, I hate traveling alone. So I don't know how that happened, you know. I don't know how this crazy shift happened because I love traveling alone. I hate uh, being planned. I hate making itineraries. So yeah, that that's like a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, huge, huge, huge. So do you do you how do you feel about that? Like how do you feel about like do you ever wonder how I do this or like what? And then basically to each his own, you know. As long as you like it, fine. But I can't, uh, you know, uh, plan in that kind of chaos. I can't do it. It would make me jittery and nervous, but watching you, I admire you. I envy you. In fact, <laughs> I wish I could do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the top experience you remember from my travels? I think two experiences I would like to share. One is the the Amazon jungle where you did a survival stint for a couple of days. You ate live termites. Now, Madhvi, my wife, is a pure, pure vegetarian. She won't even have garlic, and. That video which you had sent, I showed it to her. I just watched those expressions pleading. He's so cross. sadistic. <laughs> like I didn't send it to my mom because I was like she might not be able to like stomach it. So I sent it to him because he's always been very excited about all these like uh, fancy things I eat and all of that. And just a little background on what this was. This was an Amazon rainforest survival challenge for three days true, true. in the Bolivian rainforest. I was the only Indian to have ever gone there and done this. So we had to catch our own food. We had to source our own water. We had to uh, build our own shelter. So that day we we did we did not catch even one fish. So Tomai said, "Okay, so these days when you need some protein in your body, you go and eat termites." So he literally took like a stick and he shoved it in like a rotting bark and he pulled it out and they were like termites and he's like, "Pull your tongue out." I put my tongue out and he just like slit the stick and I was just like I could feel them still moving in my mouth and all of that and I had a video of all of this and I wanted to send it to him not to my mom <laughs> and he decided to show it to my mom and my poor mom she called me and she's like I couldn't even eat curd rice right that night I could I'm like mom why didn't you watch it and she's like no because he showed it to me because I wanted to see what you were doing I wanted to see your face and I was like oh mom it was absolute nirvana you know the expression of her face watching a darling daughter you know chewing on termites <laughs> that was crazy. What was the second one? Again? Second one was your recent uh, trip to Brazil. There were two things there. One was that you had this guy who was 
quite shady looking and all that and he followed you and he, and he said something like you know that you were the only uh, guys who were listening to me and after uh, he stayed with you for a few hours he kind of he was your guide and all that and then he gave you some uh, some trinket he gave you a necklace and all but the fact that you could uh, connect with him and i would like to share with everybody that uh, i think anki you have this great ability to create an ecosystem of positivity around you and that's why people you know reach out to you so beautifully and this was a great example and the second thing was uh, you were just i think walking on the streets of brazil and one of your friends just pulled you pulled your hand and you raised across its face was white ashen and then you were scared what's happening and all and then you came to know that you were in the bang in the middle of a gunfight between the cops and the uh, drug uh, drug lords or something and you could have easily been hit by a bullet and you know so that these two experiences i would always remember and a lot of girls are like how do I, how do we convince our parents so are there any is there any message you want to give i would to i would only say one thing that uh, you speak the truth tell your parents that you want to do this because you love it you enjoy it it's your passion and there's nothing you would like uh, would want to do more than this that's it um so yeah i think uh, even i get like a lot of these questions about people who are just graduating from colleges and stuff like that and they like you want to travel like you and i always say that i'm like you have to work hard you have to create a portfolio you have to do something you love while being financially independent and having exactly. a backup option yeah. in case it doesn't work out absolutely and there's not like kind of magic no you just step yeah. into something and then you're yeah. a big celebrity or yeah. you're a great success yeah. about like it like even with me like you've seen I mean, all my yeah yeah, yeah. like you slogged it yeah yeah so what do you have to say about that like when you saw me struggle or when you saw me you think what was there any point in your head where you just like maybe she shouldn't do it or maybe she should do something else or uh i don't think because i always felt that you were involved in whatever you're doing with great amount of honesty even when, when you were working in the production house i think you did a fantastic job you worked really hard you didn't enjoy it it's another thing but you were honest to your job and that's what matters absolutely absolutely and that's something i've learned from you also you know like um do everything from your heart like that is what i think you would also say to people you know like that honesty has to be there no no that definitely there's yeah. no compromise on that and if you get into this get into it for the right reasons yeah. right like don't get into it for becoming an influencer or becoming making money off of it or travel and make money like that's not the goal if the goal you don't be, love something yeah. you will never ever be effective absolutely absolutely any last words last words what would i say uh, except that you know it's been such a journey for her and such a armchair journey uh, uh, armchair travel for me because i ha- i think i have lived and experienced every moment she has traveled and i've loved everything she's been doing and i obviously wish you all the best and as far as i'm concerned sky's the limit Thank you guys and happy Father's Day. Happy Thank Father's you. Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody happy Father's Day.